Welcome back. Um, I was thinking about something while I was doing the coding that is the the exception handling. So one of the one, I guess one of the drawbacks of having so many layers to all this is where do you handle exception handling, um, and how is it handled? If if you throw an exception and you don't handle it, there will be a handler. <laughs> Someone will take care of it. The uh, IAS or Tomcat will will take care of it if you don't handle it your, yourself. That's why you get the error pages, uh, depending on what kind of error it is. If you had a 404 error, you saw, you've all seen that page not available to be dis displayed. If it's an application error, then you may get um, sort of a yellow screen if you're in IAS. Anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna handle we're gonna attempt to handle errors. The the thing is though, do we want to do the exception handling in which layer? Where do we want to do the exception handling? If if the S, if um the backend throws an error, if it throws this error, where do we want to deal with this error? That's the question. So first things first, it, if it can be recovered in any of the layers, you may want to handle it in the layer. For example, if it's something that's a deadlock issue, like in other words, a record could be committed because somebody else had it, they may, that may be something you want to handle in the DAL without having to return it back. If it's just a mess, uh, an error that can't be handled by any layer, my suggestion is to throw it up to the presentation layer. So let's let's walk this through. So um, I've got a mess a, a method out here called um, sample address select, and this can't fail. But I guess if it did fail, <laughs> where would the error message be displayed? All this is doing is doing a, a select. Um, it's difficult to make it fail now because uh, if I give it a different column name, the EDMX won't work and it won't compile. So it's it's a little tricky. I may want to, if I wanted to, I guess I could return a divide by zero. All right, it's taking a bit. Well, I mean, if this doesn't come back in a, in a time, remember where we had the exception. We 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 did the raise error. Well, the raise error is sent to the data access layer. So let's go into here. The raise error would be sent to the data access layer. So. I can wrap a try around that stored procedure. If I wrap a try around here, this catch will catch any exception. Any exception that be, in other words, could be an SQL exception, could be any exception, can, will be caught by EX. Okay. Now, um, one of the rules about object oriented is it's, poly, it's polymorphic. In other words, the EX is a bigger container than any any of the other messages. I can cast an EX into something else. So the, the generic message is going to, or the generic exception is going to be the exception EX. And I'm just going to blindly throw that exception. Throw means throw it back to whoever called me. So this, whoever called this, is the business logic layer. So in the business logic layer, I've got to try around that. And guess what? I've got a catch, and I'm, th I'm catching and throwing any exception that's called to the BLL. So if there's an exception, it throws it back to the, the DAL, the DAL throws it back to the BLL, the BLL is going to throw it back to the caller. The caller in this case is right here. Now this caller can handle this exception. This is where I was saying if it's, if it's an SQL exception, you may want to um, or if it's an exception, you may want to bubble it all the way up to the presentation layer. This is where it's going to be handled. My, and, and the difference is, by the way, um, an SQL exception or an exception, the catch is, is smart enough to know which one is which. So if I threw, if it threw up an SQL exception, it will go into the catch block for SQL exception, the SEX, I know, SEX, SQL exception um, uh, object will be filled. Otherwise, it's going to fill the the catch exception. Now my, my suggestion here is I would um, have an error page and that error page would parse out the uh, the objects that are available or the method, I'm sorry, the attributes that are available in the SQL exception message and display line by line by line. So in other words, before, in, if you admit us in, in here where we had the error message, the severity, the state, you can show each one of these. There are other things you can display in that um, SQL exception uh, object. Um, go nuts. 
you want to make it as informative as possible. It, from from um, a usability point of view, you it's almost like uh, this is the message that's going to be described to the help desk person. So if you put something super generic like, whoops, something went wrong, you know, that's not going to be really helpful for anybody. You can exploit any one of these messages. And whatever, there, I, I, again, there's like 15 different um, or a bunch of different things you can look at as far as the exception. Now, what happens is if it doesn't meet an SQL exception, let's say it's a um, it's a divide by zero, but you didn't do it in the back end, you did it in the BLL, it'll be caught by the EX, by the generic exception handle. Still, I would call an error message or an error page that would parse out whatever that message is. So, uh, in, in, in general, this is my feeling, but you can do it however else you want. The presentation layer calls the business logical layer, which calls the DEL. My suggestion is to have the errors bubbled up and thrown from lower layer to upper to higher layer, and then handled in the highest layer before um, the browser ends. In other words, the presentation layer is the highest layer you want to handle it in. In this case, where we have an SQL exception, I could say if it's something that's recoverable. Let's say uh, somebody locked this table. This table is locked, L locked, L O C K locked by a different process, and I couldn't do a select star from or a select from it. That's a recoverable error. You may need to wait and try it again. So in that case, that doesn't have to be pushed up to the D A L. I'm sorry, to the to the presentation layer. You can you can probably write code in here to attempt to try it again. You'd probably want to try it like three times. You don't want to try it forever because if it's locked. Um, or it's a deadlock, it'll lock your session up forever. But these are examples of things that you can handle um, at the DAL layer that you wouldn't have necessarily have to bubble it up to presentation. But my, my, my feeling was if this fails, then it's something wrong that nothing could be, it can't, in other words, besides the deadlock, if it failed, it's something that the DAL can't fix. That makes sense. Awesome. Uh, like I said, I wanted to give you a quick walkthrough of the, I guess, best practices. And what, what I'm going to do is, in here, I'm not going to write the er the error page. I'm going to put a to-do. And that'll be a job for you guys. Now I would throw that error page, like, right at the root somewhere. So you get a redirect to the error page, and it parses out whatever this SEX or whatever this EX object contains. Excellent. Thank you very much. Bye.